You're listening to The Response, a documentary and podcast series exploring the remarkable communities that arise in the aftermath of disaster. I'm your host, Tom Llewellyn, and today we're bringing you an extended interview with Dr. James Gordon, the founder and executive director of the Center for Mind-Body Medicine. Last month, shareable writer Aaron Fernando spoke at length with Dr. Gordon about his innovative approach to working with the trauma caused by social, political, and environmental disasters. From the ongoing occupation in Gaza to wildfire survivors in Sonoma County, students and teachers in Parkland after the school shooting, military veterans returning home with PTSD, and the systemic marginalization of the Lakota people on the Pine Ridge Reservation, Dr. Gordon and his team have seen and supported the many faces of trauma happening around the world. And yet, there is hope for those who have experienced these personal and collective traumatic events. I'll let Aaron take it from here. I kind of wanted to know, just to start, like, how did you initially start looking at trauma and how did you specifically start thinking about it differently from how it's normally treated in Western medicine? I started thinking about and dealing with trauma long before I knew the meaning of the word, long before I even knew the word existed. When I was a kid, I lived in a pretty chaotic family and I could experience whether I knew exactly what was going on as as so many kids can, experience the distress that my parents were having and taking out on each other and sometimes on me. From the time I was a kid, I was dealing with the consequences of what I later realized was trauma that they'd experienced when they were young, which came out in these arguments, violent arguments, difficulties getting along with each other and fears that they had of each other that in some ways really didn't make too much sense. So I started dealing with it as a kid. And then I'd always been interested in people's life stories. And as I, you know, read people's stories, whether in, uh, you know, even in kids' books, but certainly in adult literature, it's a story of people contending with great challenges in their mm-hmm. life. You know, whether you're reading David Copperfield or you're reading Shakespeare or, you know, even, even reading Stuart Little, you know, as a, as a kid, this poor mouse, you know, who lost his uh, the, the, the girlfriend he loved and he's going searching for but that sense of loss and of tragedy and of challenges that appeared in people's lives was always of interest to me. And as it, I began to become aware of it in my own life, I had to wonder, well, you know, what do I do? First of all, how do I help myself deal with it? And then how do I help other people? So I was recognizing that everybody's dealing with these great challenges. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem to me so pathological. It seemed like this is what comes to people. And as you talk with people about their experience, they tell you in pretty coherent ways, usually, uh, why they are the way they are, why they're feeling the way that they're feeling, why they're disabled the way they're disabled, at least at that moment. And so I began to get a picture of, you know, I grew up in New York City and uh, you know, worked with patients and worked in the Bronx for three years as a psychiatric resident. And so I was seeing people really dealing with very difficult situations, but I didn't see it as pathological. Although their coping mechanisms were sometimes uh, ineffective or strange or hard to understand, the question for me was not, well, what diagnostic category do I put them in, but how do I help them to deal with what's come up in their lives? How do I help them deal with the problem? It's true. There were plenty of people who saw this as uh, heretical, uh, sort of of out-of-the-box, What's the matter with you that you're doing this? Don't you think these people should just be on medication? No, I I saw myself as really being true to the most basic tenets of modern psychiatry, understanding people's life histories, and then helping them understand what had happened to them, and then giving them tools, initially tools of understanding and emotional support. And then for the years, as I learned to use many more tools to take care of myself, giving other people those same tools. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit theresponsepodcast.org or find The Response wherever you get your podcasts.